Hi, I'm Barbara Selig Brown. Welcome to Stress Free Cooking. What I'd like you to do is pour a glass of wine, put on your bunny slippers, and cook a great meal with me. Hi, I'm Barbara Selig Brown. Welcome to Stress Free Cooking. What I'd like you to do is pour a glass of wine, put on your bunny slippers, and cook a great meal with me. And today I'll be making a dish that includes red wine, so I'll be enjoying some red wine with that dish. And you always cook with the wine that you would be drinking. These recipes are from my book, The Secrets of Healthy Cooking. The first thing that we're going to do is make what I call stress-free cooking Italian seasoning blend. And the idea is that if you put this seasoning blend together and you keep it handy in a bowl in your pantry or on your kitchen counter, you, it's a shortcut to all of your cooking. So let's put our blend together. We have some celery seed, we have parsley flakes, garlic powder, onion powder, a little bit of salt, some dried rosemary, some dried oregano, and some freshly milled black pepper. So we blend all of these spices together. It gives us a nice Italian flair to all of our cooking. We'll be putting this on our chicken because we're making a chicken cacciatore. So let's get started with the chicken cacciatore. And the first thing I'm gonna do is turn on my pan and get it nice and hot. Put about two tablespoons of olive oil in the bottom of this pan. It's called a sauteuse because it has these two loop handles. So it's nice and easy to put it into the oven because this dish will bake in the oven for about an hour. You could also put this dish in a crock pot. So four hours in your crock pot on high or eight hours in your crock pot on low. So we have some boneless, skinless chicken thighs, which we're going to season with our stress-free cooking Italian seasoning blend. And let's make a little room here. So a pinch of the seasoning blend on each chicken breast. And then tomorrow night, if I wanted to grill a steak, I could put this seasoning blend on my steak. If I was making soup, I could put a pinch of that in my soup. So it's a really nice shortcut to a busy day and you still want to cook a great meal. So once this olive oil gets hot, we're going to put our chicken breast in skin side down. But I'm also going to rub this seasoning blend into the chicken breast. Okay. And then while our chicken breast is browning, I'm going to be getting the other ingredients ready. So turn these over and sprinkle seasoning blend on both sides. Okay. And we're going to put it skin side down or the presentation side down first because while the pan is nice and clean so that you have a nicer finished product. Okay. So you hear a nice little sizzle. We know that's just about ready and we're gonna let this brown for about four to five minutes on the first side. So let's get rid of our chicken plate so we don't have any cross-contamination. The next thing I need to do is to prep my vegetables for this dish. So I have all my ingredients ready. I have green bell pepper, red bell pepper, celery stalks, some cremini mushrooms or baby portobello mushrooms, an onion, and some fresh garlic, along with some crushed tomatoes. Since we have all of our seasonings already on the chicken, we don't need any other additional seasonings. So the first thing I'm going to do is crush and peel two cloves of garlic. So you take your chef's knife, you place the garlic on the cutting board, take your hand, the palm of your hand, and just give that garlic a good whack and the skin comes right off. So this dish we want two cloves of garlic, we're making chicken cacciatore, so we want a nice amount of garlic in this dish. Cut off the stem ends. And once the garlic is crushed, then you can just roughly chop it. And this garlic is going to cook in this dish for quite a while. So it'll actually end up getting very soft and will almost disappear into the dish. So I don't have to cut it extremely fine. 
So my garlic is ready. And once the chicken is browned on the first side and I turn it to the second side, I'll start adding the rest of these ingredients. Okay, so make yourself plenty of room on your cutting board. The next thing we're gonna do is cut two stalks of celery. So I'll cut the ends off and I'm gonna cut it in half because they're nice and big. Okay, and then we'll cut them again. And then you just take your chef's knife and just run it right over that celery. And two stalks is gonna give us about a cup and a half to two cups, which is plenty. It gives us a nice, fresh flavor. And if you think your pieces are a little bigger, big, just take your knife and just rough chop again. Okay, so this goes into a bowl so that, again, I have plenty of room on my cutting board. The next thing we're gonna do is our mushrooms. So we have some baby portobello or cremini, and I'm just gonna slice these not too thin because they're gonna cook for a long time in that dish, so I don't want them to disappear. And again, about two cups. And mushrooms we just wipe with a damp paper towel to get the dirt off. They're cooked, they're, they're grown in sterile solution, so it's really not necessary to go overboard and get crazy with it, but you do want to wipe off that dirt. Okay, so the mushrooms are ready. Now I'm gonna take my bell pepper, and since I really only need one pepper, but I have a red and a green, and I like a lot of color in my dish, I'm gonna use half of each. So we'll cut the pepper in half. And then I'm just going to take out the seeds and just trim away anything that we don't want in the dish. And then just thinly slice the pepper. And the same thing with the red. Let's use half of the red pepper. Take out the seeds. And this one's really long, so I'm gonna cut it in half. And then make nice thin strips. And if they're not thin enough the first time, just go back and cut them again. Okay, so that's done. Let's get those in the bowl. And these can go in the bowl with the celery because everything is going into the pan at the same time once I turn the chicken. And I'm gonna check my chicken. So it's browning nicely, so I'm going to turn my chicken, and now I can start adding the other ingredients, but before I do, I want to chop that onion. Okay, I'm going to turn this down just a little while I chop the onion. Whenever you cut anything round, you want to cut it in half so that it gives it some stability. Okay, so I'm going to cut it in half. Cut off the stem end, keeping the root end intact. And then we'll peel the onion. Okay. And actually this onion has a little brown inside that I don't like, so I'm just gonna pull that right out. Okay. So now what I do is I make some vertical cuts a horizontal cut, and then I just cut right across my onion like so. Okay. And we're all set. So now all the ingredients are ready. We're gonna pop them into the pan, and I wanna make sure that when I put my ingredients in the pan, I put them on the pan surface and not on the chicken, because I want them to saute. Okay. So we're gonna add everything else. So the onion and garlic have to go on the pan surface, and the mushrooms, the celery, and the green and red bell pepper will go wherever they fit in the pan. And as this cooks down, we'll be mixing it together during the hour that it's cooking in the oven. Okay, so that's all set. 
So now I'm gonna add about a half cup of red wine and I add the red wine to the pan surface first to be sure that the alcohol cooks out of the wine. And then we can add the crushed tomatoes. Let's just give this a little stir, get everything to blend together. And then I'm gonna put this into a 350 degree oven for about an hour. If you want this to cook longer, use a lower temperature. If you want it to cook faster, use about 400 degrees. But I like 350 for about an hour to get a really nice tender piece of chicken. You could also put it in the crock pot, which would be wonderful. When you're cooking in a crock pot, the thing you want to remember is you need to go through all of this prep and cooking before you put something in the crock pot. If you just put the chicken, the uncooked chicken, and all of the vegetables in the crock pot, you wouldn't get the same great savory flavor that you get from caramelizing the chicken from the beginning. So let's put this in the oven and we'll go on to our next recipe. Hi, I'm Chef Joseph Minera with Taste This Television. Take a look at this gear right here. Chef Revival knows how to form comfortability for chefs out there. For chefs in the kitchen, heat resistant, the look, the feel. Hey, you're working in the kitchen all day long. You want something that you're gonna be comfortable in. Well, Chef Revival has got you covered. Everything from chef hats to chef pants to chef jackets and different kinds of apparel that the chef at home can use. So for more information and to find out some more incredible products on their site, log on to chefrevival.com. The next recipe that we'll be making will be called nudie. Nudie is just like it sounds. It's a nude or naked pasta. And really what it is, it's the filling of ravioli that we're accustomed to without the pasta outside. So it's great if you want to be gluten free. It's great if you're trying to eat low carb. It's a high protein dish. But to go with that dish, we need a basil, tomato basil sauce. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take some minced garlic, put it in a pan with a little bit of extra virgin olive oil, and just saute that garlic until we smell it. And once we smell the garlic, we know it's beginning to cook. We don't wanna brown or blacken the garlic because then it could run the risk of making our tomato sauce taste a little bitter. So I have some basil here. I'm just gonna chop up. Rough chop from my garden. There are many varieties of basil, and really, depending on where you live, it just depends which one seems to grow the best for you. Okay, so we'll put the basil in there, and this goes together really quick. We just add the tomato, just canned crushed tomato, or you could use six or eight freshly chopped plum tomatoes in this dish. So we'll let that cook a while while we make the nudie. So to start my nudie, I need a clove of garlic that I'm going to remove the skin from. And I'm just gonna cut the end off of it. Okay. That's going to go into a food processor. And I have a little mini chopper here. We're going to chop five ounces of baby spinach. That's nice and dry. Otherwise, it will give us a wet, sort of a wet chopped mess. Okay. So we want to finely mince our spinach. Make sure you don't leave any big leaves in there. I'm going to add some more to this. And Now I have more for room for some more. So this dish consists of finely chopped baby spinach, some nice low fat ricotta cheese, one egg white, a half cup of flour, white wheat or all purpose flour, whatever you like, and a little bit of salt and pepper, along with some freshly grated Parmigiano Reggiano cheese. And a little more spinach. Okay, so let's put this into our mixing bowl. And then we'll be able to add the remaining ingredients. Scrape out as much as you can. Alrighty, 
we're done with this. Let's make room here. Now I need to separate my egg white. So we want two bowls. And you always crack your egg on a flat surface, not on the corner of the edge of the bowl. So give it a little bang, and then you separate eggs shell to shell. Okay, so we have one egg white. I'm not gonna use the yolk, so I'll put the shell in there. One egg white, a half cup of flour, a little bit of salt and pepper, and I'll put the rest of this into my marinara sauce. Now, I have a nice damp uh, towel right in front of me so that I can keep washing my hands, especially after touching the egg. Okay. So now I have my part skim ricotta. I'm gonna add that to the bowl, and we're just gonna mix all this together very well. And the last thing I'll add will be the Parmigiano Reggiano, which I'll grate right on top of this. Okay, so once this goes together, we'll add the Parmigiano Reggiano, and we're using a high quality imported Parmigiano Reggiano from Italy, from Parma. Okay, so that's blended fairly well. Now I can grab my cheese grater and my piece of Parmigiano Reggiano, and I'm gonna grate about a half cup over the top of this. Freshly grated cheese will give you the maximum flavor and when you get maximum flavor and high quality ingredients give you maximum flavor, you can use a lot less. So you save some calories that way. Okay, so let's mix this together. And then what we're gonna do is we're just gonna make little balls, place them on our parchment lined baking sheet. And once we have all of the, once we have all of our balls made, they go into boiling water. So here's our parchment lined baking sheet. I'm just gonna check my water. It's almost there, it should be ready when we're ready. So let's just take some of this mixture and try and get everything about equal size. And these just take about two or three minutes to cook. They just have to float to the top of the water. You can also make these early in the day and refrigerate them on the parchment lined baking sheet. This would be great if you made it with um, chopped arugula and chopped spinach. Now that we have all of our little nudie balls formed, what we're gonna do is get rid of this. I'm gonna wash my hands and we'll put them in the boiling water. Now that our water is boiling, what we'll do is we'll add some salt to the water. So about a tablespoon of salt. It'll really bring out the flavor of the pasta. And I'm just gonna turn it down just a little so these don't break apart. So into the pan we go. And when you're cooking any kind of pasta, even this naked pasta, you wanna make sure that your water is at a rolling boil, which is really bubbly. And you also wanna make sure that you use a big enough pan not to crowd your pasta so that it doesn't stick together. Okay, so we're gonna cook these about two to three minutes. In the meantime, I'm gonna go check on, I'm gonna clean up a little bit and then we'll check on our chicken. While I was cleaning up, I checked on my chicken cacciatore, which is done. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna plate it 
So to serve this dish, I have some bucatini pasta that I've already cooked. And I'm gonna put my chicken right on top of my pasta. So take one of these nice pieces of chicken, place it on top of the pasta, and then just spoon the veggies and the sauce right over, okay? And a nice grating of Parmigiano-Reggiano right over the top, right around the plate, so we have a little bit for every bite and dinner is ready. So I'm gonna wipe the side of my plate before I serve this to my guests, make it look nice. Okay, and bon appetito. Our second dish is also ready. So to plate my second dish, I'm going to start out with some of my fresh basil marinara in the bottom of the plate. A couple of my nudie. right in the center of the sauce. And if this were a first course, I would just serve about three of these. And just a drizzle of sauce over the top. And again, some Parmigiano-Reggiano. And this dish is ready to be enjoyed. I'm Barbara Selig Brown. Thank you so much for joining me today on Stress Free Cooking. You can find these recipes in my book, The Secrets of Healthy Cooking. Please visit my Facebook page, Stress Free Cooking with host Barbara Selig Brown, and I look forward to seeing you again soon.